Time now for our rants and raves, starting with Joanna. Okay. Usually I watch election coverage and I make a point of switching between the different networks. Uh, this year, my husband was on the other couch with the remote, and I had the chips, <laughs> and I didn't feel like moving. So I have a rant solely against CNN's election choreography, which was absurd. First of all, John King's behind was always in the frame. You'd have, like, Wolf Blitzer <laughs> know, and Anderson, oh, you know, Anderson were talking, and you're like, there, what's, who's that over there? Oh, it's John King's butt, right? Then you would have these panels there were like 40 people. Yeah. You needed a huge, super wide-angle lens to capture all of the people who were going to, you know, insert their opinions into this coverage. Oh, my God. And then poor Wolf Blitzer, who would be sitting quietly at the desk reporting with Anderson, and all of a sudden they'd say, we have a major projection, and he would have to race across the stage. They'd switch to another part of the set, and here's Wolf running in, <laughs> and I was afraid he was going to slip and hurt himself. You know, he's there on the set. Can we allow him to make his major projections they just weren't the from his chair. They weren't major. But they were also half the time. There were these uh, race alerts, yeah, and they were just yeah. with one percent of the precincts reporting. And it was just like, let him sit in but his I chair have to say, and do it. John King, there's nobody better. <laughs> nobody better. I don't care. Give him, give him his own. You know, I think from they the blocked <laughs> that without realizing. I said this yeah. on the radio today. They they blocked that out without thinking that, mm. that he was going to be there the whole time because he was getting ready. It to It was go. a long night. They could have stopped. <laughs> All right, Adam. Uh, I want to do a broad rave for the pollsters in this election season who, by and large, did a pretty good job predicting what was going to happen in the big races in terms of control of the Senate mm. and the House. They actually did a pretty good job two years ago in the presidential election, but because of the way their polling was framed two years ago, everyone thought that they screwed up massively, and people started talking about how fake polling was part of the fake news <laughs> and was being done to uh, suppress conservative turnout, stuff like that. I think what changed this time around is that the media reported pollster findings a little more responsibly. We didn't spend as mm. much time talking about prob you know, mm. X probability that Democrats retake mm. the Senate, X probability that Republicans retain mm. the House. We focused more on individual findings and individual races. There were caveats appended when we talk about polling. Uh, we didn't 538 this election. Mm -hmm. In other words, we mm. sort of hung back a little bit. So kudos to the pollsters who kept their heads down after having all that abuse heaped on them two years ago. And I guess to the rest of the media for uh, they weren't for really wrong questions. two years ago either. It right. Was so just well, I was trying to yeah, say that. Yeah. 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 It's just that it, 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 was, it was two percent, and it just went the other way. The New York Times needle, <laughs> right. and right, yeah. right, something yeah. improbable happened. But we, they were we, right. we may have seen a pullback on what's known as Monte Carlo modeling, mm -hmm. uh, which is the ninety-five percent chance of winning, even though the poll shows fifty-one mm -hmm. to forty-nine percent. Mm -hmm. If All so, right. that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dan, uh, I have a rant for uh, a group of uh, protesters who claim oh, to be yeah. anti-racism activists who showed up at Fox News host Tucker Carlson's house uh, earlier this week in Washington and uh, broke his door, uh, terrorized his wife, and uh, basically just made complete fools of themselves. They are terrorists, uh, by the, the way. The, well, yeah. I think they are. Yeah, they, I would they, agree. I mean, they're, she, they're associated with the left, which is, I'm not even clear why that's true. But yeah, I mean, she was terrorized, yeah. so I suppose they are terrorists. What's terrible, that? terrible move. If you want to make a statement against Tucker Carlson's truly miserable program. Don't watch it. Uh, or encourage an advertiser boycott, but don't yeah, be attacking his house and pulling that stuff. Yeah, that was really it was that awful. Was really scary it was just even to hear yeah. about it. Yeah, it was really right, Kelly, what do you got? So I have a rant that's and it got two parts. So Brian Kilmeade of Fox and Friends, you know, the president's uh, favorite show, um, <laughs> discovered that he had uh, inadvertently made a campaign donation. We've just been talking about As it. one and, does. Uh, in, inappropriate <laughs> inappropriate uh, actions by uh, Fox contributors. He's not a journalist. He's, it's, he's on the morning show. Well, he purchased some Make America Great Again Christmas ornaments, which he thought would be fun, he said, to give to adults uh, right after the election. He did not realize that that money went directly to um, President Trump. Actually, I think I believe him, you know. Um, so, he, But when that, the story was uncovered by a Jeremy Barr, who writes for The Hollywood Reporter, he did what a journalist does. He calls to say, what is y'all's response? And they said, um, I don't think we're going to have a comment and, you know. Uh, how about you go do the story about Megyn Kelly saying something about blackface? <laughs> so he's like, what? Anyway, over the weekend, he was trying to be polite. He waited for them to call him back. They gave the story to Politico, which they believe, I guess, is a far friendlier outlet. Mm -hmm. And they reported the story with a quote 
from Brian Kilmeade in which he said, this is what I did. I guess it's kind of dumb, hmm. but this is how I ended up this way. I would never, he said, make a political con contribution of any kind to anybody, even though uh, he obviously supports hmm. the president. I wouldn't have done that. If he were yeah. a journalist, he would have known better. He right. would have known how that works. Exactly. Yes. But he didn't. And so there he has. And so there's two parts is yeah. he didn't know. And then the second part is, and the, but he still made a contribution. And, and Fox's response is, oh, well, it's done now, which is not good. And the other part of it is that they are... Uh, not adverse to ripping off somebody else's story and giving it to somebody else they I think like that's better. Too. Yeah. All right. Well, there finally tonight, I have this is the total redundancy department because I have a, a rant for China, who has now introduced <laughs> the first artificial intelligent robot who does the news because after all, all they do is spew the party line anyway. But here's the new guy who's doing the news in China. Hello, everyone. I'm an English artificial intelligence anchor. I look forward to bringing you the brand new news experiences. The brand new news experiences. I wonder if the Chinese people are writing that for him too. Anyway, you know, it's just all going to be stuff that's fed right from the, the government, right through that, you know. I don't, I don't know. They're probably playing lots of fake videos yeah. too. So they can, <laughs> is he an yeah. Android? What is he? It's, it's actually, a, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a yeah. computer, computer, yeah. computerized human being. Can you imagine watching that for more than five seconds? Because yeah. I can't. No. no. If that's all, I'm not even going to comment on Remember, that. Remember, they don't have choices. Yeah, they don't have it's a choice. It's not like they can All right, that's it for our show.